Hello and welcome to another video where I look at NXL IGCSE ICT, looking at the 2019 paper and looking at how to get a grade 9 on question 3. So, this is question 3. For questions 1 and 2, please see previous videos that I've done. I'll link to them at the end. So, question 3. Ruan uses a smartwatch when he exercises. A. The smartwatch can connect to a Bluetooth health monitor. Which one of these describes Bluetooth? Right. It isn't A, because maybe high speed, but it's definitely not wired. Bluetooth isn't wired. It isn't B, because that's not particularly relevant to this. Um, the correct answer is C. It's the type of wireless connection. That's all it is. It isn't energy saving. Okay. 3B1. The health monitor uses Bluetooth to transfer data to the smartwatch. Explain why Bluetooth has an infrared is used for this transfer. So you need to be looking at the context here. It's health monitor. And a lot of students ask this question did not look at the context. So to get a grade 9, not only do you need to explain why Bluetooth is used, but you need to relate it back to the context, which is a health monitor. So the correct answer here is infrared requires line of sight. If you think about your television, if you're changing the channel, if there's something away in the way of the remote, say your little brother or sister stood in the way of it, they're not going to be able to change the channel because it needs line of sight. With Bluetooth, you don't need that. Now that's only one mark there. Infrared requires line of sight. Great, okay, that's only one mark though. Let's think about health monitor. Not always possible when exercising. I think you're moving about a lot. Not always going to be able to get line of sight. So to get two marks of that, which is what we want, we need to have that explanation there. And it needs to talk about the health of the health monitor. Number two, the two factors that might affect the speed of the transfer. Now, according to the examiner report from this year, Marks were not often not awarded for responses that gave generic answers referring to stronger connection or comment on the size of the file. So weak connection, weak signal is not going to gain you, it's a complete waste of ink. It's not going to gain you any marks whatsoever. What we're looking for here is interference. Okay, so interference with the signal. Um, so anything that blocks it might be radio signals, car passing by, anything like that. Anything that blocks the signal is going to interfere with it. You could have range. Distance is going to affect the speed of the transfer. It's closer to it. It's going to be faster. Another mark would be bandwidth. So in my previous video we talked about bandwidth and if you've got a bigger bandwidth you're going to get a faster connection. So the main point here for grade 9 is that generic answers to it like it's weak connection, it needs a stronger connection, it is not, it's not going to cut it, it's a complete waste of ink, it's not going to gain you any marks, a complete waste of time. You need to use you need to use the correct terminology. You need to use words like interference. You need to use like words like range, distance, bandwidth. And you could talk about physical blockages as well. So anything like that is going to gain you marks here. C, some data needs to be encrypted when it's transferred. Describe how encryption helps to keep the data secure. Two marks. So encryption is when the data is scrambled.
Um, there's different ways of doing that, which we won't go into here, but you just need to write data as being scrambled. So that if it was intercepted, it wouldn't be able to be read. It needs a key to read it. When it's scrambled, a queue is created, and to be able to read that data to wherever it's sent, you need, the, you need that key to, in effect, unlock it, and to be able to read the data. Examples of data that needs to be encrypted include emails, bank details, any, any kind of stuff, stuff like that, that's, that's really important that criminals would love to get their hands on. D. Roland's smartwatch uses GPS to monitor his location. Two pieces of information that could be calculated using GPS data. Now, some students have lost marks here because they've worked, out, they've written down that it's calculating his location. It's not. It's not doing any calculations on his location. It knows his location. What we want to get here is two pieces of information that could be calculated using GPS data. So we can assume that it's, we've, we already know where he is. We've already got that data. What can we calculate from that? So think about when you're in your car, when you're in a car and using the sat-nav, it can tell you how long it will take to reach your destination with tra current traffic conditions. So we can work out ETA, which stands for Estimated Time of Arrival. Incredibly useful thing on GPS systems. We can calculate that. We can also calculate time to destination, which is kind of like the first. Kind of similar to the first point there. Quickest route shortest route. So I'll put quickest slash shortest route. Other answers you could have there are distance you travel. You could have distance to your destination. Anything like that. So something like calculating the location is not is not the right answer and won't gain you any marks whatsoever. In this next question, E, some social networking services use GPS data. Describe how the use of GPS data could place social network users at risk. Some students gained full marks because they wrote about the consequences. So what this is saying is GPS data could be shared with social networks and social networks. How could how could that how could that pose a risk to the users? So the users Location is publish. So it publishes their location. One mark. Why is that a problem? Information shared inappropriately. Um, could lead to. Production, etc. Okay, kidnapping, etc. Anything like that. Um, just really explaining why why that's a problem because someone could find your location and go and meet you without your knowledge. Go and meet you at that location. And this last question is three marks, and this is something that's sort of crossing over into computer science a bit here but becoming more and more common in Excel papers for IT. So you basically need to know how to answer it. And to answer it, you need to know the difference between bits and bytes. And I've covered that in other videos, but basically what you need to do is start with a pyramid. Now, it's really important here that you understand the difference between mebibytes meb and megabytes. This is 1,024. I've got a bit, that's the smallest amount of data I can have. A byte is 8 bits. 
Pibibyte is 1024, Mebibyte is 1024 of these. Okay? In this exam, you can get away with saying a thousand and a thousand. The exam board have made it very, very clear that from 2020 onwards, you need to be talking about 1024. So, I've got a bit, a byte, kibibyte, mebibyte, and that's 1024. It's not a thousand. It must be 1024. If you do the calculation correctly, but you only put in a thousand, you're not going to get any marks for that. Okay, so I've got four mebibytes of data. Construct an expression to show how many bits there are for mebibytes. So I've got to get from there to there, basically. I've got to work it out so I can work this backwards down to there. How many, how many bits have I got? So in four mebibytes, I've got four times 1,024, which is, is equal to 4,096. You're going to have to do this without a calculator. Okay? going to have to be able to walk, work this out without a calculator. So in that, I've now got 4,096 KB bytes. Okay? So that would give me one mark. Now, I need to multiply that by 1,024. Okay? So it's 4... 1,096 times 1,024. So I need to go from there to there. Okay. And that gives me 4,194,304. So that's how many bytes are in there. I need to get that to bits, so I'm going to multiply that by 8, that last figure. So, 4,194,304 times by 8 gives me 4,194,304. So that gives me 33,554,432 bits. And that gives me three marks. So the final answer here is 33,554,432 bits. And the expression is four times 1024 squared times 8. Okay, so that is 4 times 1024. So 1024 times 1024 times by 8 to come up with this answer here. Now I have looked online, but I can't see anything as you find out. You can tell me in the comments below. I can't see anything about you being allowed to have a calculator in the exam. So Sorry guys, but this time you're going to need to do some maths, you need to work this out. And what you cannot do is round it down to a thousand. That would be easy. You can't do that for the 2020 onwards exam. So that is question three. Have a go at that. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. Thank you for watching.